I'm Lindsay Dawn McKenzie, and you are listening to Tanya Tate's Skinfluencer Success. This is Tanya Tate. Skinfluencer Success. You are listening to Tanya Tate Presents Skinfluencer Success. How do you keep a career in the adult industry long-term and profitable? My guest, Lindsay Doe McKenzie, is an internationally published English glamour model, porn star, page three girl, cam girl, television host, and an OnlyFans creator. She will share her journey of coming from a teen swimsuit model to being one of the most successful British glamour models, and how she still has a flourishing career almost 30 years later. Welcome, Lindsay Dawn McKenzie, to the Skin Influencer hey. Success Hello. Podcast. Yay. Hi there. Hello, everybody. <laughs> How are you all? Oh, Thank you for amazing. having me. Wow. When you said, Lindsay, would you like to be a guest? I couldn't believe it. I was so, honestly, so excited. I was running my, I've got my first ever podcast. And I actually <laughs> didn't even really know what a podcast was. I've never actually listened to a podcast in my life. You are going to be listening back to this one, Lindsay. Oh my god, I want a copy. I'm gonna be watching it all the time. Oh absolutely. You, you are gonna get a copy. You know what? I'm so amazed. Like it just happened as you know, you put out on Twitter you wanted to try and be a guest on a podcast. A fan that's a fan of both of us, he saw it and he tagged me and I was like, Oh wow, yes. I want Lindsay Dawn McKenzie on my podcast. I'm so honoured that you're Thank here. Thank you so much, whoever you are out there. And wow, what a hookup. We owe hey. you a drink, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> we do. Lindsay, it's, it's, it really has been a while since I saw you. And I'm just, there's been so many things that have been going on in the UK. And I'm trying to figure out where did we meet? Was it? Was it in the studio or was it at one of the no, conventions? Or was it at a party? we have worked together, have we? I don't think no, we've, we've ever... Not We've, We've not worked, worked together. together, but I think that we met at an award ceremony. If I, I think it was an award, sh- it must have been an yeah, award show, and it must have been something to do with Television X. That's why I'm thinking of the studio. Yes, it would have been. In fact, maybe we were in some sort of series for them in different yeah. episodes. Yeah, I think. Was you in the fairground? episode? No, I wasn't in that one. I was already living in the the US oh. by then. So, yeah. but, but you know what? I think it must have been at one of the um, award shows that we were there and we kind of got chatted. I think I might have handed you an award at some point as well. Oh, I hope but, you yeah, did. no. <laughs> You're so funny. Our memory is just like... <laughs> When I first met you, I couldn't believe you was from Liverpool because I, I don't know, I, I always thought you were a London girl, always. And then you spoke and I was like, now, I didn't place that accent with you at all. <laughs> Weirdly. I used to have, a, also I had my own, I had my own collection and you were one of them actually. I think I got some free giveaways in the old plastic bags when you're walking out and one of them was yours and I loved one of those scenes god it was my favorite for a long time sorry any more because i've got a couple of other good favorites but <laughs> it definitely was <laughs> oh, i'm going all red now <laughs> oh my goodness i never knew that i'm i'm very like blessed very honored and it's i have to say it's very hard <laughs> it is lindsay <laughs> <laughs> i mean i mean lindsay dawn's personal Collection. You were, no, you really were, and I played that one a lot. <laughs> People say, you know, how do you do what you do and you still, because I, I am a big fan of porn. I really am, personally. You like um, to watch. It's... Yeah, I do like it, and I always have. Um, I think I... it comes back to the first boyfriend, he had a great collection <laughs> and worked so... a lot. <laughs> We're like, okay, let's go back because we're sitting here, we're, we're jumping all around everywhere and people are like, who is Lindsay Dawn McKenzie? Who is, for, for people that don't know who Lindsay Dawn McKenzie, tell everybody who you are and let's talk about how you got started in the industry. Let's go right back. It was an era of Samantha Fox. Now, if you're from the UK, well, you don't have to. I mean, she was very big in Japan. I hear she still has a healthy music career in Japan right now and tours there. So she was huge there. I mean, 
I'm not sure about over the ponds here in the US um, how big Sam Fox was, but I, I know she's internationally known. And my brother was a huge, huge fan and had all her pictures all over the walls. So obviously I was growing up, I was like, oh, oh that's, you know, because it's page three. So page three, because people that are in the US, they probably might not necessarily know um, a okay. lot what page three is okay. so it's it was the the local newspaper so you go down you buy a newspaper and you know the front cover and then you turn over to page three and there was always a hot girl yeah. wearing yeah. just a, a pair mm. of knickers topless i mean some was... of the girls i remember um which people would obviously you know place is linda linda lusardi gainer goodman kathy lloyd kathy lloyd she was yeah. my favorite <laughs> Yeah, she was, she was she really yeah. well. So yeah, I mean, I had this, this visual, I think it was 94 and we were in a recession. Um, I just left school. I was the youngest in my year. And when we left school, we all had to go and look for jobs. Well, I actually went for a job in a swimming baths called Water Palace. And I went as a cleaner for a cleaning job. And then I just one day sat there and thought, you know, I could definitely do page three because I'm growing rapido here, you know, these things are <laughs> very blessed here. And it's so weird because a friend of mine said to me the other day, do you remember when we were young and we sat there and you said, listen, if you eat toilet paper, your boobs grow. I said, did I say that to you? <laughs> I said, I said, toilet paper, seeing yours go, Whoa! I thought she's onto something here. <laughs> the things you remember. But anyway, so going back, there was a recession on and I remember a day specifically my mum we were all sat watching telly the doorbell went and it was the provident man <laughs> now I don't know if you remember the provident man where you got tokens off him and then all through the then you'd use them for Christmas for your children or you know and you'd buy presents with them because they were for all stores and then what happens is you pay him a premium and then obviously he makes money because you're paying interest and I remember my mum saying hide everyone i was like well why oh, man. The man's here okay so pay it no i haven't got any money and then i remember thinking jesus there's a recession my mum's got no money like what am i gonna do here so i you know i thought if i don't take action and and think about my my career and think about where where i can go and what i can do and at that point i had these great looking boobs and I thought I'm going to take some get my sister to take some pictures of me in a bikini and I'm going to send them to a model agency so she was like yeah let's do this you know and we we put the music on and we were taking pictures in bikinis and I, we both sent them off and then I got a call on my landline because there was no mobiles back then yeah. I got a call on my landline. It was like, oh, is that Lindsay? I was like, yes, yes. Can you come and see us, please? I was like, oh, wow. Yeah, it was like the next day. I was like, this is great. So jumped on a train and went over to Ellsfield and met up with an agent. And he said, I have a client who would absolutely love you. He said, I've got a job for you straight away. I was like, wow, this is brilliant, you know. Um, so he said, you need to take the bus outside and go to further up the road to Wandsworth or somewhere like that. So I got out and I went along and I remember walking in the building and I remember just looking around, seeing like five studios and thinking, oh, this is real. This is the real deal, you know. And I met the photographer and, and I explained to him that I wasn't 16 yet. And he decided to just do some classical bikini shots um, and until I turned to the legal age and yeah and the legal age at that point in 1994 before the new law of 18 came in it was 60 so it was you know it was legal and it was good so I, I love this it's like I, I remember Samantha Fox Linda Lusardi, Kathy Lloyd. I remember all that. And I, you know, Samantha Fox, and then she had, she was singing, and I was like, she is so hot. And for, for you, just having that visual, you know, your brother's got the pooch, uh, 
your brother's got the poster ever up on the wall and you're sitting there and you're looking at it and it's like these I always think we manifest things so it's like you know you sit there and you look up and you are picturing yourself as that person on that poster and I, I'm sitting here now Absolutely. and I'm looking behind you and there's you on that poster behind you for, for you to just visualize and manifest it. Well, and- absolutely. And like you said, manifestation. As I've got older, I've actually become very set in my ways with, you know, visualization, drawing, law of attraction. You know, I put it on the wall. It comes to me. You know, I'm very, very heavily involved in that. I do, um, a, there's a thing called Jose de Silva method. And I train my brain where I count backwards for like 10 minutes, three times a day. I, I don't know. I, I, I do believe in that. And, and I do tell myself that remember the days when I thought I'm going to be a model. I'm going to be a model. Yeah. You made yourself a model. Yeah. No, no, I think it's that's like a way in life to look at life as well. Me and you are sitting here, right? Okay, like you are extremely successful, Lindsay. Back then, now, you know, when I first met you, I was like, wow, it's Lindsay Dawn McKenzie. <laughs> it was like, it was a wow, it really was a oh, wow goodness, moment please. for me. You. And, you know, I did the same. I sat there and I watched a movie with a guy, some random guy, and I was just like, I could do that. Mm. That same thought. I could do that. Mm-hmm. And you put it out there and it's like, you want to do it, you're going to mm-hmm. do it. And I, I love this is that that's how you got started. You know, we got the bikini shots and I, I, it, it really was amazing the way that they started you off. You know, at that time, everything that you do was completely illegal. They counted the days down till they were going to release these shots. And did they put you on page three when you was, you know, it was time? No, I was and on they the front took- page. The front page. Oh, I'm sorry. (laughs) I think I was on the front page for the next five years, (laughs) like every week, every near enough every day. See the countdown. That was the really exciting part to the whole start. I remember that morning, you know, knowing that I was about to walk into a shop and see my face on the front cover of a newspaper because I heard before that it was going to be a front page. So oh, I was yeah. like, wow. Yeah, really worried, really scared. And, and and funny enough, my brother's friend was a paper round boy. And, yeah, <laughs> he was, and my mum ordered it to come and be delivered to us. So it was, it was a really surreal kind of wait, you know. I really wanted to go down to the 7-Eleven earlier. I was in the morning and get it because I couldn't sleep all night. I was like, oh, my oh. God, you know. Because not only, I mean... I come from um, quite a old-fashioned family. My grandparents were diplomats in Egypt, in Alexandria. Um, mm-hmm. My nan's a very posh lady, you know, very conservative. And I didn't want to upset anybody um, doing what I was doing. But funny enough, she was really proud, like, and it, and it really didn't matter um, that it was, you know, topless modelling. She didn't really... Um, care in the end I think what what you know did it for her was um I used to be in a show as well a road show and we used to sometimes work alongside Excalibur road show and there was a oh that's the the that's the male guys isn't it the male striptease guys and yes and we got really friendly with these guys and I said look my nan just loves lovely looking men you know she loved (laughs) Michael she loved them all and she used to have this cupboard and you'd open it and there'd be all pictures of hunks in there. And uh, one of them said, look, I'll come and visit you, Nan. I was like, you're joking. Aww. He was like, no. I said, you, would you wear the kit? Like, and give, you know, so he went up to her care room. <laughs> <laughs> all that day, she was so cool with me about everything I did. <laughs> oh, I love that story. Imagine, Nan, I've got a surprise coming for you today. Thanks, hey, Steve. <laughs> Steve Golding, do you remember Steve Golding? I don't remember. No, he was married to Gaynor Goodman in the end. Oh, was he? Yeah, he was a I really do, guy. That's so funny. It's it's like, I, I love it when like family are proud. You know, it's like family are very accepting of things. Because yeah. it can be, you know, for some people it is challenging, you know, to your family to suddenly see you. In a movie, in a picture, in a video, in, in you know, in the newspaper. 
we we were kind of brought up in a prudish Britain, weren't we? I mean, how many people used to go topless on the beach? Not that many. God, everyone would be like, what are they doing? You know, you go to Spain and there's nudist parts of the beach. Here in the UK... I, I think it's a different level, though, isn't it? In Spain, like, I when, when I was in my 20s and I went on a holiday to Spain, I would go topless. It, I didn't think anything of it because yeah. that is what you did in Spain. You went topless because that was... That was just the norm. Everybody Absolutely did it. It was, yeah. But I, I think in the UK, you're right. We are a little bit we more British. It really has got better. I mean, I do think we are totally in a different era now when it comes to the girls that are starting out. And also in what we wear. And I don't know. I'm not, I mean, I'm not prudish, but I'm either one or the other. You know, if I've got this part on display, I'll keep this bit covered. And if I've got this bit on display, I'll keep this bit covered. Are you the same or? It's in general, I am quite well covered. You know, I've been to conventions. We've been to conventions. You know, there's a lot of conventions. I, you know, I wish that I'd known oh, no, that I'm like, in a place. What I'm saying is that you are in the place, right? You're in a convention. That's where we down, we, we get into our mode, who we are in the industry because the fans are coming to see that person. But in my regular life, no, I'm not really a person that goes out. We are both mums. All the girls are glamour models now from having a few shots on Instagram. We used to have to be, like, published to be a glamour girl, right? And now it's so much easier to have a career. And in fact, yeah. Tanya, most of these girls that are, haven't got the publicity – that haven't really, you know, um, hit levels yet, are making great money. They are. I know. It's <laughs> so true. It's like, here's the thing, like, Glamour Model years ago, you'd have to make it, you'd have to be in the newspapers, you'd have to be published, you'd Absolutely. have to, like, you know, where are you going to move on from there? Like, you did Loaded, you did... Yeah, FA, I did them, I did them all. <laughs> FHM, all of them. Yeah, Zoo. No, so there's. You did it many times over. It wasn't just like a one-off. It was like many no, times it was over. A you were thing so for twenty odd years. Yeah. yeah, in demand. And like now, for example, you know, if you want to get an FHM and you are not known, this mm. is this is a true fact. You can pay to be on the front cover of FHM. You can pay for that spread rather than them paying you for your pictures I it's really it. turned the other way around and it's it's i'm not it's sure different. that these are genuine real mccoy magazine covers though i don't actually believe they were ever published do you ah. <laughs> well <laughs> i'm a bit of an investigator you know i'm a bit of a <laughs> i assumed it was i really am but only because i don't want to waste my time like i uh, like I mean, again, being in the industry for so many years, I've, I've met up with so many scenarios of what could possibly happen, what yeah. has happened. I've learned a lot of mistakes. Wowza. You know, yeah. um, not taking, you know, if you do a camera club and you don't take the deposits for the slots, you could be stood there on your own all day. <laughs> <laughs> for nothing whereas if you take a deposit you know that if these guys don't turn up to come and take their amateur sh you know session with you for an hour because i i do for that i do like support people that are trying to be photographers because we need them camera club is that i'm like whoa all the guys are like what's camera club Lindsay? Yeah. so it's where the guys where you put out your time and then the guys can come and pay and they well, can take do, photographs I hire of you. a mansion somewhere with beautiful location and then I offer out the hours and they can come down with their pro cameras. They can come down with their own photographer and tell him what they want. And then they get the specific shots that they actually go out seeking out. And they don't yeah. get many of them. And someone might have this idea in their mind. They saw something when they were young and it, and it sparks up this thing for them. But actually they've trolled the net to find something that's similar and they need it in their life, you know, and it's all they need, really. And in, in order to be able to contact a girl and go and shoot her, and it's the girl that's got your description in your mind, your, you know, that you've seen, for, that, make, that makes you tick. Yeah, I get a lot. And I do six hours back to back. Uh, and I actually enjoy it. And it keeps me fit. So I love it. 
I love it. All these guys are going to be like lining up. It's, <laughs> it is, it's, it's, there's, there's a lot of opportunity. So you've gone from, you were really put out there on the spotlight and you were so in demand, you know, just all these amazing opportunities were coming your way. And I know, you know, you've got the obvious, very beautiful and like an amazing chest, right? But what else is being there, like contributing? How were they just landing on your plate, these opportunities? And you were looking at them and picking the right ones. Absolutely. Yeah, I didn't take everything. I mean, if you look at my career, you can see that because a lot of people are like, why is she, you know, not working with guys like boy girl why why doesn't Lindsay hit that level why is she dragging her feet and it was really down to um i think control i knew that if i did everything straight away for the company i was working for then i'd leave nothing for myself and it came to the point where I won an award for selling 75,000 copies of one of my films. And I was paid a commission for a month's work. Yet somebody was coining in 75,000 copies and, and amounts of money. And I was wondering, who's getting rich here? Yeah. And then my head screwed on and I thought, mm, no more. I will tell you what I'm doing. Uh, and then I took my control back. I worked for, I mean, listen, I've worked for a company in America and they were like family. They treated me very well, very well indeed. The Americans know how to do it. That industry is covered. It's, they even call people talent, which I think is a lovely thing. Yeah, that, that is you, you a are different very ball game over there. And that's why I really enjoyed my time. They made effort. They built the most amazing sets. They spent budgets, you know, and I so appreciated that because it really made me feel special. And I think that when you're doing that kind of work, because, look, we've all got that time when we sit there and it can affect our brain and you feel a little bit shameful. And you feel that pit of your stomach turning over because you think, am I doing the right thing by being in this industry? And, and do, you know, do people look at me in a bad way? Or And then I realized, hey, you can't pay your bills on other people's opinions. So then yes. it, it, again, I bounced back again. I was like, it's, it, you know, I've had a life where I have had these moments where I've slipped into like a slight, doom doomsday type scenario and then i flip out of it again and then i realize hey you're a good looking woman and you're doing the you know you're you're not doing any harm to anyone nothing's illegal and there's people out yeah. there doing a hell of a lot worse so yeah you're good chill i think for you know for us it, the most important thing when you are in the industry you know it is it is different and people do look at you differently you know okay. And those people that look at you differently, I learned this, it's if they don't accept you for what you are, then they need to go and focus their energy somewhere else. Absolutely. So then us, we can be accepting of what we do in ourselves mm -hmm. because that's you, you have to go through that process at the beginning. You know, you have to decide, like, I love that you, you know, you tell yourself if you're down in one of those moments, you tell yourself, no, I'm amazing, I'm beautiful, I'm wonderful, and mm -hmm. this is what I want to do. And it's being secure in what you're doing and knowing you're doing the right thing. And when when you said like holding back some of the things, keeping them just for you, mm -hmm. it, it is. It's like, I mean, how many times did you probably get asked, hey, do it, do you know, you've done your pictures, you've done your spreads in the magazines, you did movies where it was like yourself and you was, you know, no, don't you get me wrong, I did girls. end up doing a boy girl movie and it was with my first husband and I, I actually thought that's nice that that'll be okay. You know, it's like, I wasn't going out and I wasn't working for, I still have my grandma alive and I swore, I said, well, I didn't swear to her. I wouldn't do it. I just said that, you know, I would do what makes me feel comfortable. Uh, and she knew I wasn't comfortable with that, but I think the time came when it was right. I just got married 
um i wanted to get on the ladder to buy a place you know the money was right the money was right and i waited yeah. out and got the highest bid and i don't think anyone would have ever have been paid that kind of sum of money for one movie for half an hour ever so it was just perfectly timed and perfectly yeah. right i was all on board and it was right and 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 for me i think that's the advice i give people don't ever be pushed into anything you don't want to do Every, all the time you are in control of yourself there's no shame to have be had you know because it's you've accepted it and that's why you've gone on to do it and and it's fine you know otherwise it will ruin you if you do something you don't want to do that's when it elite you alive you know i was looking on the internet the other day and i looked lifespan of a woman in the adult industry do you know oh, it's 34 years no don't that that is not i uh, it's not accurate i know it's not accurate it's really not accurate because they're not putting every single person in the industry and they're just picking it's so easy to find the people that have passed away and then like what every other single person they probably put this the statistics are not right right and you know it's in any industry it you mm. could be any person in any job and you could have demons and those demons can take you down you mm. know but it doesn't have to be just the adult industry it's not just the adult industry oh don't i know oh, i've been down to all those rabbit holes i know <laughs> there's bigger worse situations and issues going on in the world other and and that's why i say to other people you know because people want love to hate me would love to hate me but they can't because when they meet me i'm like so in your face i, I won't let them escape me i'm like hi how are you how's your day been and they're like where is the wife like i'm not speaking to her you know like that and i'm like you look lovely how what can you say to that you know you look lovely i used to work in a bar years ago and you know i i was just regular size you know on my chest um it was before i had augmentation and i remember working in a bar and a girl come in and she did like she'd done some topless pictures and my i had my green eyes were full of envy but i was just like and then I thought, you know what? Doesn't matter. And I was the girl that would serve her in the bar because I thought, you know what? I would look at her and I think, if you can do that, you must be amazing. But I still had the green eye envy. But I would yeah. be the one that would talk to her and the other girls would be a bit like, hmm. yeah. And, it, I, and you, you, you see a different side of things. Like, and, I, and I can honestly say every other girl that really didn't like her or, you, you know, had an issue with her, I think it was jealousy like you know they are out there and they you know whatever it was I don't know maybe she took two pictures I I don't know I just remember she had taken yeah. some topless pictures the thing is I used to work in some lap dance bars doing personal appearances all around the UK so you walk into a lap dance bar with like 20 girls there thinking you're coming to like spray on their pitch you know they're like <laughs> me I walk into the chat hello girls you know, they're like, who is this nutter? And I'm like, how are you? How's it going? So how, how are the punters tonight? Are you doing well? Are you being lucky? Listen, I wouldn't wear that. I'd, that other thing you had on before looked better than that. You know, if you just, um, I, you, you just got to have the confidence with them. If you can't beat them, join them. That's the yeah. way I see it. Like, I've yeah, I look in, in your face. Like, I love that. It's like being confident. You are taking an interest in them and you mm. are making them feel comfortable. And it's yeah, when, like, when someone's overly kind to you, it's it's very difficult to be. Absolutely. I mean, everyone. Not the anyone. same back. You know, I had a half an hour chat with a, with a homeless guy the other day. And then, you know, all the library people were coming out and saying, are you okay? Are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm fine, thank you. Is he bothering? No, you are, actually, because we were just having a chat and you're bothering us. <laughs> yeah. like, like they thought he was a bad person because he had nowhere to live. Oh. So 
you've been in the industry now for almost 30 years and you went from being a glamour model and now you're on OnlyFans, you're an OnlyFans creator. So I'm interested in like, how has the social media changed from when you originally started to now? It's changed. I mean, look, Twitter's never really changed, has it? It's always remained the same, i.e. you're allowed to obviously post more explicit content to promote stuff and they've never been, you know, don't cross over on other sites here and, you know, they were they were happy for us to make money, whereas more of the likes of Instagram, they're more prudish, they're more, oh, no, not us, you can't put OnlyFans on here, you can't do this, you can't, do, you know, whereas Madonna can do whatever li- whatever she likes. It's so double standard there, oh, isn't Britney it? Britney Spears, Britney Spears is like, Britney Spears, is all of them. Whipping they it all out. Do anything. Us, well, personally, I'm ghosted right now on there. You know, when you can't even find me, shadow banned. They keep taking me down. Oh. So I'm like, you know what? I, I love this. It's like, Lindsay, I want to go all the way right back. So for you, like the fans, they are what makes our money, right? They're, they're what pays our bills. Absolutely. So from going back to when you was in page three, when you was in the men's magazines, um, the only way that people could contact you um, was if you were making an assignment appearance? Did they did they write letters to you? No. Did, did was, you have fan yeah. mail? Did I, you? I should have actually have prepared this for you. Uh, I actually had a fan club straight away. Like I gave that job to my mum to run my fan club, <gasps> and the reason being is that I was getting ten thousand letters a week in sacks, <gasps> and I actually went and bought a PO box. And my mum used to go down and they say, no, we can't put them in the box anymore. Your free sacks are over there. My mum used to be like, I can't believe this. Because like I used to get, they used to do competitions in the newspaper and say, who could draw the best Lindsay Dawn McKenzie? So I used to get like 5,000 pictures of myself, like drawn by people. And my we, we were quite clever because my mum was in the mailing business. So she worked with junk mail. My dad owned his own mailing house. So we had all the machines that did all the putting in the envelopes, you know, going along. Oh, wow. And they had stamps, like proper stamps, you know. And my dad ran a lot of my fan club through his business. And it was amazing. And it was just what we needed. And I'm sure I never saw the Provident Man ever again. <laughs> so so that's really interesting. It's like I'm I'm really curious. I wanna I wanna talk about the way that it's changed, you know? Mm. So going from but would they like send their money? Would they send their money and yeah, say, checks, Lindsay, here's checks. here's my it's money and Absolutely. And then they buy stuff. From yeah, well, my mum, my mum then ended up leaving the mailing house, and my dad run it. My mum purposely went to work for Jessops. It's a photo place we used to go and get when you had a camera and you take your camera, and you take your disposable film, and you take it to Jessops, yes. and they would you come back a week later or two weeks later because it took a long time. And the, here's your here's your packet of photos. Yeah, but when your mum's the manager of the shop, <laughs> all right, and, we're quite and every family. The, <laughs> the photos are allowed because you know, with with those places, if it was a bit of a photo, and they thought, well, that's a bit dodgy, they might not have give you that photo My back. Pass it all. Yeah, she used to. <laughs> You know, she rang up the head office and said, we have a client here. Um, she says she's a model in the glamour industry. We're going to have some, like, quite explicit stuff. Can we do this? And they said, yes. So, yeah, my mum used to have it on Express, out, in the next day, you know, like 10,000 pictures already done. I'd go off to an exhibition. I'd sign them all. You know, yeah. it was a – they were the days. They really were. And I'll tell you what I really love. I toured Greece when I was young um, with the show, with the road show. And every night we had a different club in a part of Greece. We did uh, Greek TV, you know, TV shows. Uh, And that that was a real nice feeling of having the family. And it kind of reminded me of being back at school because we had that, you know, when you leave school, you don't have that unit anymore, like that place to go and you miss your mates. And so for me to go straight onto the show at like, 18 
and be sent off to Greece with everyone, go touring around was fabulous. I loved it. But then I came back early because there was um, Miss Face and Figure of 1998 was on and I was competing in it and I ended up winning it. So I was happy that I came back from the tour early. Just, I just wanted to cover this thing about my autobiography because it isn't my autobiography, by the oh. way. Basically, what happened was an ex-model contacted me and said that she'd just finished her writing degree and did I want her to write my autobiography? And I thought it was a great idea. I thought, I've never done a biography about my life and how I, everything happened and all that. And then it ended up that she wasn't just an ex-glamour model. She was a feminist. And she hid it all from me. And she had the publishing deal, not me. She's the one that had it. And then my deal was with her. But when I asked to see the first two um, chapters of the book, they were terrible. They were nothing. They, they sounded like my mum had pushed me into it. And it was really terrible. It was so off the actual mark of what actually happened. And it hurt me because I thought, why would you want to do that to a successful person in this industry? And it yeah. all blew up in like, because you know me, I just, I've got to speak about it. I can't let you somebody do that to me. Yeah. You're going to pull my pants down. You're going to pay me for it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, so I ended up washing my hands with her and the book. And people always ask me about it now. What happened? You know, oh, I read your autobiography. And I'm like, well, you just read something that's totally not mine. Like, yeah. she elaborated on stories. She said that I walked in to meet her into a restaurant and that I looked like um, a weak, skinny sparrow or something ridiculous like that, like a weak person. I would never, ever see you as a weak sparrow. You never, are full like, of energy. You not in my big personality. Yeah. So, yeah, it was disappointing, but I just wanted to, like, set the record straight while I've got a live well, people are listening. Say so right now, here and now, from me, that that book's nothing to do with me. Yes, yeah, she used tones of my story to make a story, but she elaborated in her own words scenarios that didn't happen. And since then, I've tried to get hold of her to get the tapes off her because I'd love to know what I actually said and compare it to the book to prove that this yeah. is rubbish. But she's gone missing all of a sudden. Like, there is no Vicky Dark out there anymore. You cannot find this woman, not for love nor money. I, I think that's, like, a really good thing to point to raise. It's like, you are given an opportunity, you know, hey, we're going to write the book, and it sounds amazing. You know, I've, I, we've all had people that are, oh, I'm going to write your book for you, but not yeah. everybody is a writer, you know? you're opening up really deep to somebody and you're putting your trust yeah. in them and you're trusting that they will provide a product that is is it really shows your personality shows the real you yeah well, it unfortunately just, it just, it's like you know it's, i didn't really not being given to you i didn't realize there were people in the world that could do such a thing because like my mum had terminal cancer and she was on her deathbed and gave interviews to her in her final oh, days. Yeah. And it, and that's another reason why I wanted the tapes back because I wanted to, I didn't know what my mum had said about me and yeah. I didn't want to read the book because I knew it was not my, and it just made me angry. So now I don't yeah. know what my mum said about me in the final days. Do you know what I mean? And I don't know what she's twisted and what she's made up out of it. So it hurt me to the core. Yeah. I just wanted to know what my mum said and to, for her to just go missing now has hurt me even more because I'm like, you've got my mum's voice on your tapes, you know. But it doesn't matter now because before my mum died, I said, was you proud of me? Like, have I, have I, have I made you proud in, in your life? And she said, you're the one that's made me the most proud. So that yeah. that really, you know, I didn't need the tapes then. Yeah, you, you knew deep down how your mum felt about you. She would love you no yeah. matter what. But all the things that you did, you, you know, her life was enriched by your presence. Yeah, I mean, I had a few down, dark days in the career where I'd wake up and I was on the front page of the News of the World for some unflavoured stuff that actually I was honey trapped. I don't know if you remember the Talisa story uh, where the record producer flew her out to L.A. and 
And then when they got back to England, he befriended her and made her trust him. So he'd set people up for different yeah, things. Yeah, he'd set people just... up to make stories about them. Well, right, the same thing it. happened to me. He set me up as well. And it was, um, he pretended to be a sheikh prince. And he even went to the extent of hiring a Savoy hotel room and then asked some people like some people that I was with because it was a dance troupe we went there to do dancing for him you know like um lap dancing like a private yeah. function for the for a prince everyone was well excited and then he started yeah. asking everyone to get narcotics you don't have to be a user to be able to get narcotics I mean do you do you understand what I'm saying I I really would not know but I I, I think what you're trying to say is like what I'm trying to was... say is he honey trapped me I was yeah. on the front page of the newspaper, even to the point where they didn't get the shot of me they needed. They called me back the next day and said, the prince wants you to dance for him again, just you. And I was like, oh, okay. So I went along again, was waiting outside. No one turned up. They were taking pictures of me because they didn't get the first lot of pictures the day before. Oh. It got so bad, honestly. You wouldn't even believe it. In fact... Realistically, I could probably sue the life out of him, really, if I really wanted to. But I just think it's bad energy that I wanted to be left. My mum was all right about it, you know, and we all got over it as a family. You know, can you imagine the people that were calling my mum? Your daughter's on the front page of the news of the world, you know. <laughs> not for a good thing either. <laughs> yeah. And some things, you know, that was not in your control. No. You know, I, I could see how that... Could I was easily, used, basically. Yeah, you, you could easily... It, I mean, we all get asked, like, hey, the prince wants to meet you. And mm -hmm. you can either say yeah, you can say no. But it, but there are situations when it's like, that was like legit. That was all set up. And people are set out to be fraudsters, you know. But the, the, the story about that is you bounced back. That was a dark morning. Yeah. That was a dark day for you. But you come back from that. And now, is that going to happen to you again? No, because you have talked, that is a learning curve. And I always think it's like, we have journeys and we have journeys of our life and we take the paths and we take the choices. And sometimes it's like, you think you look back. And I say to myself, I wouldn't want that situation to mm -hmm. change because from that situation, I learned things. So then now I'm moving in this direction and everything that I'm moving forward with and everything that I've gained now is because of that experience that so was I, not feeling good enough. at the time. Absolutely. I think that OnlyFans is brilliant. I really think it's I, a good thing. I, I want to move on to that. So we, I, I just love the fact that it's, it's changed. You were here almost 30 years later you told me that the date and I was like I don't know whether to say it I'm like no nope. you're, you're very you're very good with the dates it's coming from so we've got all the fan mail so and now we've moved forward it's not fan mail anymore you know how did you find only fans you know how did you get from that converting those fans how did they convert through the years from the fan mail I moved on to webcam yeah. after you know, just having fan club thing, website. And then I went on to webcam and, and I love, love webcam. I mean, I, I love building relationships, virtual relationships. Yeah. Uh, I have loads of them, like hundreds of them. I don't know. I think I, it, it just makes me feel good. And I feel like anyone that comes onto my camera is very respectful. I never have yeah. disrespectful. Well, I think they know better. I think I have freaked out a few times out on socials to people that think they can say things to me, and I'm not going to have that. Um, and then I think I get this streety kind of thing in my head because, like, when I was younger, I was like running everything, <laughs> running the school, running the estate, you know, running everything because I, I don't know, I was, I was quite out there. <laughs> And then it just spilled over to my socials. Like, people know that I will not, there's nothing I won't say to you. I'm not embarrassed yeah. of anything. I don't have that. I actually think I'm probably misdiagnosed of something, whether it's ASD, ADHD, something. Because, yeah, I can say anything. I don't feel that shame. Or oh, should I say that? Should I not? 
I'm just so in your face, like with the truth. But you, you could just be so confident in yourself that you are okay saying it. You yeah. don't have to yeah. be having any that. label. <laughs> you don't have to have a label to be confident in yourself and say, I'm okay to say this because you know that is how you feel. You know, I feel hurt it, sometimes because I see, see people's face go. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, no, if I made them feel bad, like, are they embarrassed now? And they go all red. And I'm like, oh, oh, should we just get this finalized? Like, you know, people don't like to talk about money. People don't like to talk about business. They don't like to talk about, you know, serious stuff. And I'm one of just they just it out of the way. Let's cut the eyes just let's... get to the fun yeah let's sort out the transaction and let's just get yeah. to the fun i've had a few so fans die recently sorry to say and some real long time fans now now look i've had fans since the beginning like i still talk to people that i spoke to when i was 16 no they're yeah. still fans of mine but what yes. i found with it is if you are that person that somebody has an orgasm over for the first time, they can't not be without you anymore. Like, they keep coming back. I've had rousy people, and they've gone off for two years and come back again. Like, honestly, they cannot be without the original thing. You know, you ask someone, why do you like big boobs? It's probably because when they were little, they saw someone, they thought, oh! And then from that moment, something lights or turns on something. And then they will always remember that first thing that, that, that sparked them off. And it's always yeah. related to that. I mean, I've had a foot fan come over. I was, I was going to talk about feet. Mm, because a yeah. lot of guys, it's yeah. like the, the things that they see, it's like, you know, when they were like younger and like feet mm. and shoes and... A friend this way. I call it, see, I went to say a friend of mine. Friends. They are friends of mine. They are. They, they, they there are, are certain fans that do become friends because friends. because you interact with them so many times yeah. and it is that relationship. And here's the deal. They are paying for the relationship. Let's not, let's not let's try not and pretend and that yeah. that doesn't happen. However, if they, if they didn't pay for that relationship, the, the relationship would not exist. But we get hundreds and thousands of fans and there are certain ones that are our favourites. Yeah, they and are. They, they treat us the best. You interact with them. Mm. The interaction is, so is much just amazing. You. They care about you. Yeah. You no, know, I have fans that I broke my coccyx bone about six weeks ago. Fans oh, sending no. me, you know, coconut water with potassium in it to make it better, oh. quicker. You know, these people look after me. They do a good yeah. job at it. And I rely on them. I ask for advice from them for things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I respect them 100%. Like, you know which fans, like, you think, well, I know that if I've got a question about that, I'm going to ask you. Because you know that they have knowledge of certain subjects, you know, something's wrong in the house, blah, blah, blah. I, oh, I know we'll know the answer to yeah. that question. Yeah. And you literally go to them and you'd be like, hey, I need a question about my air conditioning. <laughs> it's it's true. If I've got a legal question, have I got any lawyers out there in surveillance? You know, like we can see anything. So I've fans, a lot. fans that are listening to us right now, make sure that when you do come and you start the interaction, you start the virtual relationships. You know, you do want to be our favorites. You know, because we remember the favorites. But also, let us know what you do. You know, we never yeah. know when we're going to actually Absolutely. call you to be like, hey, Pray do you in this little bit of advice. how can you serve your goddess <laughs> <laughs> so it, it it has it's gone from you know the webcam and then is that when you've kind of moved on to the only fans is, yeah. is that where we're up to now and that's my home you know people they they come and i say how have you moved in how are you settling do you like your room do you like it good you're in ldm house now these are the rules you break the rules and if you piss me off oh my god you need to hide <laughs> they love it they love it we're all good there everyone's happy everyone i do lives you should see my lives oh my god they're gonna know the information about the live by going to see the live on your only fans yes. live. it's like it's like she's not gonna reveal anything guys they're, they're like oh please tell me i'm like 
you need to get over. Lindsay, you are on OnlyFans. On ta just because people are now, we're talking about it so much. What is your handle on OnlyFans? It's just my you? name in full, no gaps, Lindsay Dawn McKenzie. Lindsay, I have taken up so much of your time and I absolutely think that it's just been wonderful sitting here talking to you. And, you know, to, to be now on the OnlyFans, you know, why why are you successful on your OnlyFans? You know, you've told me you've got your loyal fan base. You've got, you make them feel special. You've got those special relationships. You know, what is it? What, it, what else is it that keeps okay, those so fans there coming back to you after 30 years? You know, what is it that does it? I think is, is a big, big plus. If you're consistent, people follow your stories and they want more and more and more of you it's like the kardashians it went from one episode to how many consistency is key i i treat them all like family members really um and i'm always there every day answering every single message see what it is people run their page differently to me well i don't know about some people do it the same some people don't um, I think the, the girls that don't have a following, like i.e. the people that haven't come from porn or Patri or they make a lot of money. And it, I think it's all the whole trying to get them to do something naughty is really exciting. And then when they do, boy, oh boy, we're all buying it, right? For me, I, I have certain days where, you know, like I'll have um, Movement Monday, you know, like I name them. And then what I do is I shoot my own content everywhere, all around my house. I go and hire out new venues. I go and shoot there. Um, some girls might invite me in to their home and do a shoot with them. And we do good scenarios. I do a lot of... Um, and what I do is I have a system of pictures that I put out. And in the morning, I'll be fully dressed in an outfit. Then I'll go to one boob. Then I'll go to two boobs. And then I do like a maybe on all fours climbing into DMs to get the bundle. And then when they get into the DMs, that's where the bundle is. So you'll get the explicit pictures of that set with the video that I've shot. I can, sometimes I do live today and I do like uh, me. Hi, I'm live today. Oh, yeah. And, and I just get on with my business and I'm doing the washing. Oh, I'm doing the washing. You know, I wear a little something sexy. And so... I, you know, I, I wing it a lot. Like, um, I just let them get involved in my day. You know, I might go for a pedi. And my girl, such a lovely girl. She's like, yeah, I'll sit back and then you can just do. And then I'll do that as a day, you know. Let, and I've got a massive foot following, by the way. Huge. Yeah. Um, I've had the same guy come to the UK to take photographs of my feet for the last 25 years. And he comes all the way from Australia. Wow. Yeah, so... So, I, so loyal, these, these was, fans are yeah, so Yeah, he loyal. was my very first person that I didn't really know about... I didn't know what he what he was after. Talking about. <laughs> you feet. know, you're like, like, I've got feet. Like, and he's like, no, just your souls. I was like, oh, okay. It, your souls. He thinks they're so wrinkly and so soft. And then he used to say to me, let's go outside and walk on some gravel. Ah! That... <laughs> Especially in the winter when it was raining, there was all puddles. He used to love me walking in them, but it killed. D oh. Dirty feet. Oh my goodness! <laughs> so it's about consistency. It's about yeah. it, and it's it's real. It's Don't you. Go it's real. It's mm. there, and everyone knows that they can keep coming back every day. And they are in Lindsay Dawn McKenzie's house. You are there for them. You've kept them from when you was aged in your teens, right the way through twenties, and now it's almost thirty years later. They are still there with you. They are loyal, and you have managed to keep them going. And they're going strong. And they are. you know, yeah, it's 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 better such and better, an, really. I think yeah. I'm doing better now than I did in the beginning. Well, no, maybe not. Maybe 10 years in. I think when I started working for other, like the score group, I'm doing better now than I did then. So that was probably when you were working for like production companies. Yeah. You know, and you, you're set by their targets, by yeah. their financial limitations. That's right, yeah. By the things Just that by they by being you exclusive do. as well, because you lose a hell of a lot of money being exclusive to a company. My God. You know, the offers I'd get to leave the contract was just a joke in itself. But now you are totally in control of everything that you do. You're in yeah. control of your own finances. Yeah. And it's, it's a com 
completely different you know scenario where we well, are in now. control but i do get led by my people like if there's something that's missing off my page they alert me you know like oh we haven't had much of this recently i really would focus on that a bit more because you've done a lot of lingerie try and get some bbc in you know these people you know do you know what my people do this is so amazing and i'm so privileged they even let me know if i forgot to put the tag on for the money for the video they will oh, i've look, done that before will say to <laughs> i've done oh, that. i know right? i've done that, like that. that that's no! that's that time when you, when you feel so sick when you've sent it all and it's like a really big one and you're like your heart's going your stomach's turning and you're like yeah. who's seen it yeah. who's seen it oh on send on send and you're like oh okay <laughs> a fan bought me this and he stress punch me as you can see he's been beaten up <laughs> so and and those fans that did see it that appreciate it, it they would still send you the tip anyway you know yeah. And you, that's how you find out who your loyal who cares about are, you who really, the ones that love your you best the most. interest and not robbing off yeah. you. Because at the end of the day, if you sent it out with no tag on, that's my fault. But the fact that they wanted to alert me because they wouldn't want me to lose out in the long run after working so hard to bring it, you know. And another thing, sometimes like I do my lives and the guys tip me to get me to take items of clothing off. There's a lot of guys that just overly tip knowing that no one's really tipping or it's a slow yep. one but they yep. want me to know that i'm appreciated they're the ones that we remember the most there really is you know? That's one reason why i'll always stay and i won't have anybody bad mouth my industry either you know a lot of people go away saying how what a bad industry it is no 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 you just chose to surround yourself with the bad people so you surround yourself with the good people. You get those good fans. You look after them. You give them the exciting things that they need. And they will always yeah. be there for you. Absolutely. And Lindsay, I want to just ask you one thing. If you could give your younger self a piece of advice, what would it be? Work for yourself. <laughs> there you are. Everyone's listening. It's like, we're all going to work, work for, for ourselves. Yourself. Yeah. Well, now there's a platform to be able to work. And now I'm so proud of that. I really am. Yeah. The one thing I do worry about is, you know, I remember the relationship I was in in the very beginning, uh, my first ever relationship, and that man tried to control me. So, and he thought he was running me. So even when I say work for yourself, I'm not just talking about the big production companies that want to pay you a one-off fee to make so much money in sales off you. I'm talking about anyone I'm talking about the men in your life. I'm talking about anyone that you're working for in a group of people, maybe on, you know, a webcam site. Just remember that you can look out the box and there are opportunities for you to make your own money with nobody else involved. There's clickers that we can take our own pictures. We've got ring lights. You don't even need a photographer anymore. Well, I, I've so many times, like when I first started on OnlyFans, I'm like, you know, there's me stand and like, there's me phone and I'm like, <laughs> click, click, click. And I'm like, they're not going to like this. I've got no makeup on. And they love, love it. it. They absolutely loved it. So it's, it's good to have a mix, you know, of everything because the real fans will love you no matter what. Oh yeah. Do. They love every, but they love you, the bones of you. Not just, the, you know, the assets. <laughs> everything about you so it's been really amazing talking to you Lindsay and I'm so blessed I'm so honored Thank I'm so privileged me. that this is your very first ever podcast mm -hmm. Lindsay Dawn McKenzie's very first podcast you are here with me Tanya Tate and you are an amazing woman and I'm I'm seriously I want to when I come back to England I'm like can I can I get a visit in to go and see <laughs> <laughs> we must bye bye together though huh we got to work together at some point it would be are you coming not... have you got any have you got any plans for america yeah well listen I, i'm really seriously thinking soon maybe i need to marry an american look, like. <laughs> you just need to look into it <laughs> i'll be like are there any are there, are there any american immigration lawyers listening help. right now Lindsay Dorn McKenzie help me. needs your help you help me and I'll help you 
<laughs> oh my goodness. Lindsay, I just can't wait to like really physically meet up with you again. <laughs> me and... too. Me too. Yeah. It's been a long we... time coming. We need to make it happen. We I'm just do. so happy. Push Thank push. you so much. Lindsay, tell everybody where they can find you online. So online, um, I'm on Twitter. Twitter is Lindsay, but my name, my mum's a hippie and she spelled it weird. It's L-I-N-S-E-Y. Lindsay underscore Dawn, D-A-W-N. That's Twitter. Instagram, Lindsay Dawn McKenzie one, the symbol one. Now be careful with that because there is a guy that's trying to um, catfish me with Lindsay Dawn underscore one with the same picture, with the same scripture. And so it's definitely just Lindsay Dawn Mackenzie one, nothing else. Get it right. Only fans is Lindsay Dawn Mackenzie. Lindsay that's Dawn it really. Um, I don't really do anything else other than webcam, but all the links will always be on my Twitter for that. Just go, just go to Twitter, Lindsay underscore Dawn. Mm on twitter yeah. perfect that's all that they need to know thank you so much it's oh, been thank you so much to have you, you look amazing by the way you've been working out so right you. when you got up to you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh there's some guns right <laughs> oh, i don't really do weight so i'm only doing the push trainer this is tanya tate influencer success